Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm John. This is Many a True Nerd, and welcome back to Nicole. Last time we are getting deeper and deeper into the clues and learning about the girls. It is time to figure out what we can learn about the abductor, and for that, I'm just going to have to go clue seeking as fast as possible. See, end of Sunday, already at 857. Pretty damn good. Okay, we've hit another mystery related cutscene. Visiting the places that Yuli Chai has volunteered, it seemed like it would be a great idea. But then I followed through and tried to do it. I realised it was a bit much to ask for. For one thing, no one will tell me jack squat. I tried the place mentioned in the article, but since I'm not part of the police, no one there wants to tell me anything about her. I guess it makes sense they'd be wary. Her disappearance was the most recent. For all they know, I could be in cahoots with the abductor. Oh, how wrong they'd be. Well, we don't know. Your roommate might be the abductor, Nicole. Or your boyfriend. Any number of people you're close to could be the abductor. If only I knew what places she'd volunteered at. I could try asking people there, but... You get the feeling they'd keep their lips zipped too. This is looking more and more hopeless by the second. And to make matters worse, I nearly forgot I had a shift today at the convenience store. Ted's going to give me such a look if I'm late. I gotta go. I run all the way to the store, taking no time for breaks. Just as it strikes the hour for my shift, I'm just past the glass sliding doors. Oh, we're doing a flipping shift with Ted. Okay, that's unexpected. I thought we were pretty much done with all the other boys, but we are back with Ted apparently. So Ted looks up from one of the aisles as the front doors do that welcome beep. Shaving it awfully close there, Nicole. Yeah, sorry, I was running some errands and lost track of time. Well, clock in and get dressed. You made it. That's what matters. Yep, just a sec. Wait. Get dressed? Crap, I don't have my uniform with me. Ted must notice the look on my face, because right now he's giving me a pretty scary look of his own. Spit it out. I didn't remember to bring my uniform with me. I sputter the words before I second guess it. Ted's going to be mad, sure, but I don't want to think of how furious he'll get if I lie to him. On cue, Ted sucks in a breath, pinches the bridge of his nose and exhales loudly. What am I supposed to say to that? Shucks, don't worry about it, Nicole. After all, you're my favourite employee, Don Tootin. I bat my eyes at him, hopefully. Doesn't seem to work too well. Ah, uh, nope. I'll let it slide this one since it's the first ever time that's happened. But... Ted points at me, showing no signs of joking. But you can bet that I ain't allowing this in my store again, Nicole. Get it together. I nod quickly and obsequiously. Whatever Ted says goes at this point. I don't want to end up like that guy he just fired. After putting things in my bag in the back room, I step behind the counter like usual, feeling oddly out of place in my street clothes. As lame as I think the uniform looks, at least it made me feel like I worked here. Right now I feel like I'm some random stranger manning the cashier while the real employee is out back. I sigh and slouch my shoulders. I can't wait for this shift to be over now, as if I didn't have enough on my mind. Nicole? Oh god, what did I do now? I I'm sorry? I blurt the words out without thinking. Ted just blinks at me dumbfounded in response. You're apologising. A why? I guess I jumped the gun. I thought I screwed something up. No, nothing like that. I'd have found out by now if that was the case. I, um, was wondering if maybe there's something weighing you down lately. Ted scratched the side of his head nervously. I couldn't help but notice you ain't been yourself. Like you got your head in the clouds and you're afraid of falling back down, you know? May just be me, though. Ain't none of my business, so I'll drop it if you wanna. No, you got me. I'm actually kind of glad that Ted noticed. I don't want him to think I hate this job, or most of all, him. But I don't think I can tell him about those messages I've been getting either. Ted has enough to worry about, and I don't want to drag him into this. I've just been overwhelmed lately, still getting used to this whole college thing. Better adapt sooner, it'll chew you up and spit you out before it knows why I hit you. I'll be fine, Ted. Don't worry. I ain't that worried. Ted blushes and looked back at what he was working on in the aisles. I just don't want to see you overworking yourself. Classic, coming from me, I know. But if that's all it is, then it looks like I was the one getting ahead of himself now. I'll pace myself, boss. Good, I don't want you to end up like this one girl I used to know. My interest is immediately piqued. Could Ted be talking about what I think he's talking about? A former girlfriend? Ted jolts upright, face bright red. Of course not, I don't have time for any of that. The girl I'm talking about, I guess you can call her a friend of mine. 
She used to volunteer at a whole bunch of different places around here. Oh, how flipping convenient. Sometimes she'd stop by the store to grab a snack real fast. That's how I started talking to her. Are you talking about Yuli Chires? Ted pauses and gives me a look that suggests I hit the nail on the head. How'd you know her name? Oh, um, I... I read about her in articles about the disappearance case. You're describing it the same way the newspapers did. She was the most recent victim, right? Ted nods grimly. Sadly so. I haven't seen Hard nor her ever since that happened. I heard her folk pulled her out. Good thinking on their part. I know I wouldn't want my kid in some school where I couldn't stop this from happening. I nod distantly, though my mind's on other thoughts. Now that Ted's brought up the subject, there's no harm in asking for more details, right? How old did you know Yuli? Well enough, she came in here that often. I smirk. And you're sure you didn't have a crush on her? He makes that same blush again. Man, Ted makes it way too easy sometimes. No, no, it wasn't that. I just admired her. The girl worked way harder than I did. I'd be getting out of my shift just as she was heading on to her next obligation. So she was out late a lot. More than your average person, at least. I warned her a few times you might bite enough more than she could chew, but she never did believe me, that girl. Did she do anything else weird? Ted narrows his eyes at me. Why are you so interested in what I have to say about you, Leon, all of a sudden? I'm just interested in the disappearances. I want to know more about them. Well, take my advice and don't stick your nose too deep into it. Leave it out to people like my pa. Didn't you say you didn't care too much about those disappearances? What? Me? No, you must have the wrong girl. I laugh nervously and try and distract Ted from my obvious lie. Blame a girl for being curious. Even if I only wish it was mere curiosity that was the thing that motivated me to learn more. Can I just ask one last thing? You just did. Besides that, obf. Ted shrugs his shoulders in exasperation. Fan shoot. Did you see her right before she disappeared? Was she acting strange? Hmm. I don't think she was acting any different than usual. Oh, but I remember her being worried over living alone until fall semester. Her roommate went back home for the holidays, so it was just her in the room. Did you want to be the one to keep her company during then? Can it? You said one last thing, so I'm going to ignore you and get back to work. I suggest you do the same. Remember, we're on the clock here. And like that, Ted is back to being all business like usual. I'm beside myself with surprise. Somehow, without even trying, I managed to get some dirt on Yuli Chires. All thanks to Ted, no less. I know he's going to be way mad if he catches me, but I pull my phone down and jot down the things he's just told me. I don't want to forget them. Who knows when I might need this information? Nicole, you better not be on your phone! I freeze at the sound of his voice, then quietly, I pack my phone back in my pocket. On second thoughts, it might be better to wait until I'm on my break. Okay, so she was on her own, her flatmate was regularly absent. Well, so's Chandra, I'm a bit worried by that still. Okay, and it feels like we're about to... Oh, yes, there we go. We have maxed out clues. We are in early December. I've maxed out clues and maxed out wit. That's all I really need to do at this point, quite frankly. I mean, I have literally no diligence or no social skills or no zeal, but I've got wit and I've got clues and that's all a girl needs. And I've got $155 in the bank I don't need for anything. So a girl has made bank, got clues and is witty. What more does Nicole possibly need? All right, fine. I will just crack on then until the next scene. Okay, we have appeared here on Friday in December the 6th. So Nicole's come here to ask around Erin Sverson. I asked, I figured asking people on the track team would give me the best feel for the type of person she was. The only problem is the track team isn't even in season. Can't believe I didn't realise that. Apparently the track team doesn't officially start practising till the end of the semester. That was even on the website too. How could I have missed that? So there's no one around here who's on the team, and I've literally no idea where to find anyone who is. Great. Just great. Just bring in Kurt. Come on. Come come to Kurt. And there we are. Good. We've bumped, we've bumped into Kurt there. Is it too early to say we really need to stop bumping into each other like this? Kurt gives me a cocky, lopsided smirk as he meets my eyes. Yep, definitely not in the mood for this. Bye, Majory. I ignore Kurt's waggling eyebrows and just walk right past him. Whoa, 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 Grave. Wait a second. I hear Kurt clomping after me. I'm not sure I should wait or just keep going. But I do slow down enough for him to catch up. 
At least let me walk you to the library. The library? For our cold tutoring deal. Wasn't that why you came by the football field? I wasn't ditching you, honest. Practice just ends a lot later than I was expecting. I start where I am and finally notice, wow, way to go, Nicole. You've been near the football field for the past few minutes now. I must have made my way here from the track. Wait, was I supposed to shoot you today? I look at Kurt and he looks at me, and the most smug look appears in his face as he realises he's the one who remembered, and I'm the one who forgot. Don't. Don't you say it. You completely forgot about it. Kurt slaps a hand to his forehead as he starts laughing. There can't be anything worse than that. The sound of Kurt being right and me being wrong. Ugh. I could have skipped today and you never would have realised. Damn, just my luck. Oh, just can it, okay? I groan into my hands, too embarrassed for life. I don't even have my e-contacts but with me. Well, I have mine. We can share it. Kurt's voice gets softer at the sight of me. I don't know if I should be upset that I've reached a point where even he has to pity me or what. At least it stops his laughter. Something up with you? Forgetting things like this is never your style. Let out a long sigh before I pull my hands down. I probably smudged my makeup, but I hardly care now. I'm just stressed out, sorry. I didn't mean to forget about our tutoring session or to shout at you. It's cool, Grave. Tell you what. You can take a rain check if you're not feeling up to this. Pfft. In your dreams... I'm not the one who's getting the most out of it, Maidry. I can't go easy on you just because I'm having an off day. Kurt chuckles and flashes me a thumbs up. There we go. That's the grave I remember. I blink a few times. Does he really just cheer me up without trying? Ew, what's with this development? There's no development here, Nicole. When we're not going with Kurt. It's not happening. So even if you weren't out here for the Maidry, what were you doing? This isn't your usual turf unless you're hanging out with that hot roommate of yours. Is there any girl you don't find attractive? I hold a hand up before he can start. Don't answer that, and as for why I was out here, I try to think of a way to sidestep this question, but I can't think of anything that doesn't sound like an obvious lie. Guess you can tell him part of the truth at least. I'm sure you at least have heard about those disappearances that happened, right? Pfft, who hasn't? Never paid you as the kind of girl who was interested in it, though. I can be curious about news things. I was trying to see if I could learn more about the first girl who disappeared, Erin Sverson. Her article said she was on the track team, so I came out here to try and talk to her teammates. <sighs> here comes the embarrassing part. But I forgot that the track team won't start practicing until the fall semester. Ha! <laughs> Classic mistake. You've got to read up on some more sports stuff, Grave. Where's your school spirit? I have school spirit, I just don't have athletic school spirit. Wow, that comeback was really lame. Well, even if you did get hold of some of the track girls, I don't think have too much to say about Erin. I don't think she had many friends. He says that with enough certainty to raise my hopes. Still, I'm wary. How do you know about her? You're only a first year. I've heard stuff from the other guys on the team, alright. Besides, that Erin chick was kind of notorious for being a mega bitch. Don't think she got on well with any of the other girls. Insisted on practicing by herself, saying the others only brought her down. Sure, she was a hella fast runner. Oh god. Someone just said hella again. Can I just escape from all the games where people say hella, please? But her attitude stank. I heard her roommate couldn't even stand her last year and avoided their room as much as possible. Wow, literally no one could stand her? Literally no one. <laughs> Just goes to show that if you've got the skills, it takes more to be a true icon. Take me for instance. It's that major magnetism that got everyone hooked. Just let it go, Nicole. He wants a retort. Don't feed the trolls. Do you know she practiced by herself very often? Don't got a clue, but it still sounds like she did. We're better for everyone that way. Erin got everyone to stay out of her way. Everyone else was spared her wrath. Total win-win. Heard the park was her usual training spot. She ran for the place non-stop, all day, all night. Weirdly enough, that was where she showed up again. Hmm, maybe the abductor did that on purpose. It'd make sense. You sound way too interested to be just curious about these disappearances, you know. I snap back to reality and see Kurt sneering at me from the side. Don't tell me you're one of those weirdos who got all into strange phenomena and junk. I really am only curious. I'm not that weird, you jerk. To think I was actually going to thank you for all the information you gave me. Kurt takes my insult in his stride and quickens his pace so he's up front. He turns around facing me and walks backward. If you want to thank me, be sure to teach me enough to ace that next exam. Couldn't you have given me something easier to do? 
I stick my tongue out at him before I hurry to match his pace. Without missing a beat, Kurt spins on his foot so he's facing forward again. Well, you could always do... Nope! I laugh at the look on Kurt's crestfallen face and shove him with my shoulder. I know I complain about him, but he's a nice guy deep down. Maybe deep, deep, deep down. It's more like it. In either case, I better remember all the stuff he told me about Erin. Kind of weird how he knew all that, but I guess Kurt's got to know something. Well, I think it's pretty obvious what's coming up next now, which is obviously Jeff is now going to have known the girl who was on the chemistry team or whatever. So let's, I'm just going to skip forward to that, quite frankly, because it's pretty obvious that that's what's coming up next. Okay, Alicia Henrik sounds like a girl I could have related to. She was smart, ambitious, and she was on track to graduate with honours. And she's going to have known Jeff, so let's just skip forward to that. Oh, hi, hello there, assistant, and to what do I owe this unfortunate surprise? I wonder if he's going to acknowledge the fact that he threatened to rape me the last time we met each other, and then, since then, we haven't communicated for about ten days. I wonder if he's going to acknowledge that in any way. Hey, Jeff, I was just wondering if Professor Garve was in. I wanted to ask him something. He's out, I'm afraid. He must have better things to do than babysitters and competent staff today. I sigh loudly as disappointment settles in my chest. It's not like I can just ask him after class, but every moment that passes with me doing nothing puts me on edge. Jeff straightens up from his beakers and pushes his goggles into his hair. How convenient of you to express your discontent right as I finish this crucial step of the filtration process. Is this where I ask, is everything alright? Please answer in a sentence or less. It makes it sound like I'm answering some short answer question on a test. I guess I'm not as okay as I usually am. I love how obviously the game, the script for the clues section has been written independently of the relationship. So even though I've kind of, Jeff speaks to me completely differently, he's back to how he spoke to me originally because the game doesn't know which of the boys I've decided to date, if any of them. So that's why that's happening, that's kind of cool. I guess I'm not as okay as I usually am. Ah, that was what I thought. Hmm. Wait outside. Why do I have to go outside? Because it's going to take me a while to finish this filtration, and I know well enough you would dread putting on the lab equipment required to stay in here for that long. When I'm finished, you can discuss with me the finer points of your malaise, and what I can do to hopefully rid you of it. Oh, that's really nice of you, Jeff. Is this even him or some freaky twin? Not at all. I'm only doing it to practice. I haven't been approached to solve another's depressingly simple problem for them some while now. I'm afraid I'm going rusty. Never mind. This is Jeff, all right. As insincere as his motives are, I'll still take all the help I can get at this point. I head outside and stand near the door to wait for him. Some people pass me by and I'm sure I look like some weird girl waiting out in the hall by herself, but eventually I hear the lab door open and look. You're free to begin at any time. I am listening, though I may stop you if you begin to bore me. The reason I'm here is kind of blagged, just because I'm stressed out in general. If I'm not telling anyone about these messages, there's no way I'm going to tell Jeff. But I came to talk to Professor Garver because I wanted to talk to someone in the chemistry club. And with that, you have managed to completely pique my interest. For what reason do you have need of this info? And of whom? I garner it isn't for blackmail purposes. If I was the blackmailing type, you'd be so busted by now. I want to know more about Alicia Henrik, one of the girls who went missing last year. A faint look of surprise crosses Jeff's face. You didn't strike me as the type to be interested in those disappearances. I guess I just can't keep my nose out of other people's business. <laughs> hmm, well, if you were thinking on asking Garver, that was bluntly put a stupid move on your part. There's no way he would have discussed the type of info you're probably looking for. And what type is that? Raw opinion. Jeff shrugs, shaking the floppy glove he has in his hand. I hope he turned that inside out first. Garver is a professional, therefore he is only allowed to give an unbiased, roundabout answers to any deep inquiry you may make. I, on the other hand... He places a hand on his chest, gesturing to himself. I'm not a professional. I can tell you what you need to know with no need for the usual rigmarole. You should be delighted that I'm offering to help in the first place. I will be sure, but I don't know if I can really trust Jeff of all people to give me accurate information. Were you in the chemistry club, Jeff? With a talent like mine, how could I not? Is what you'd expect me to say? No. 
Truth be told, I was not a part. I have no interest in organisations such as those. It's much too exhausting being around the same group of people for so long. However, I have heard some of those exploits from the big man himself. You mean Garfa? I huddled close to Jeff, so there's no chance of us being overheard. Did he mention anything about Alicia? Only that she was his prized pupil, very smart, very bright, somewhat like you, I suppose, except not. Ah, oh, Jeff, you flatter me. I have my moments, but whereas you are far more relaxed, Alicia was an uptight wound coil, ready to burst at the slightest unforeseen circumstance. Ah, oh, if only I'd been there to see the explosion for myself. Jeff dreamily sighs like we're not talking about someone having a vicious meltdown. Anyway, she was the type who didn't have much free time. I remember seeing her at the library at the late hours of the night, toiling away at her studies. I would consider it a sad situation if I cared. I doubt she had much time to relax. So she never had much free time on her hands. Who knows, but I would say she spent a good amount of it in her room and on campus. I suppose everyone was used to it and simply started to see her when they see her, as they say. Late night studying in the library, and then running around working for her clubs. Yeesh, I would not want to be her. And now you see why I am morally against organisations such as that. Don't you intern here though? Yes, but this is not a club, it is an internship. I can claim work experience from this. This, at least, provides a means to an end. I guess so, but anyway, is that all you know about her? Yes, is that all you needed to know? Well, I did have a few more questions. Too bad, I must return and analyse my results. I lower my eyelids at Jeff's tone of voice, but hey, I got this much out of him, I should be grateful. Well, thanks for the help, Jeff. I guess you're not as rusty as you think. Jeff smugly buffs his nails against his shirt. Oh, any time, assistant. Use that information wisely for whatever trivial need you require it for. Sounding completely unconcerned, Jeff waves me off and heads back inside the lab. Okay, so that is information about those three girls, and I think that is enough for the moment. I will crack on with this soon, but in the meantime, I've been John, this has been many a true nerd, and this has been Nicole, learning about the three of Dr. Girls. Thank you very much, and goodbye. Haha, <laughs> I'm a genius at time. Oh, oh, okay, this escalated quickly. I'd, I'd like to fly your drone. What's so good about a butterfly in a bucket? What does that tell you about the human condition? Are we the butterfly and is capitalism the bucket? What happens if you go right to the back in time? The very beginning of time. Oh, you literally just burn the universe.